Okay, welcome back to chapter two in the grandfather clock tutorial. Today we're going to be concentrating on making the middle section and as you can see there's several variations on here. This one has a fixed i.e. not openable door and I've put a little cut out frame detail around there just to give it some interest. This one does have an openable door and I used some hinges. I'd like to put another piece of craft board down there to hide those hinges but I put those on after I'd already built it and stained it and I've done a little a moving pendulum but not a working one in the sense of it doesn't tick and a tiny little door handle so that's what we're going to do today again I've cut my craft board on my green mat this is white craft board and I've cut the whole file and I suggest you do this the first time that you make it so that you can play around with the doors and see whether you want to make a fixed door or a hinged door and which style so this is laid out exactly as it is in design space so I attached everything and clicked make it so that keeps these layers exactly as they are these are the side pieces I don't know if you can see that the side pieces it is quite slim in profile and um, grandfather clocks usually are the first ones here look very similar to these these are the door and these are the door frames this is the back and the back is just slightly longer than the door because if you imagine if the door and the back were the same height the door would scrape on the bottom let me show you with this one here so this back piece here is slightly longer and it's the same as the size of the same length the door is slightly shorter so that it can open and shut otherwise it would scrape at the top and the bottom so that's the only thing really to know is that these ones, the shorter ones are the door and the slightly longer ones are the back. And then you're completely flexible really how you would like to make your doors and you don't have to have them opening. So I just need to free those up with a knife. That would uh, make the frame and I used three layers of craft board for the frame and it's sturdy enough so if you just wanted to make the frame you could glue three layers of craft board together a little bit on there if you wanted the plain front you would just have that you could put the frame on the plain front and that gives it some detail and then we've got two versions of this arched top and you'll see this arch is a little bit thicker than that one and it has the square top so this is sort of the back of the front frame which sounds a bit complicated but if you imagine this needs to shut onto something and it shuts onto this slightly larger frame so if i just get two of those off of here one from the top and one from the bottom you'll see that they are slightly different well they're not great with a back with a white background there we go they're slightly different and that's so that that one then would fit over there and hinge open if you wanted it to hinge but it's got the sort of the back piece there to shut onto whereas if you only had a square frame behind this you'd have a gap can you just see that there you'd have a gap at the top so that's why if you want to make this the opening and shutting door you would use the curved top frame but my opening and shutting door I just went for the plain top so that's probably um, the most fun bit of this build is deciding what you'd like to do whether you'd like to fix it and that's probably easier for the first time you build it um, and you could still have a see-through frame 
and put some perspex or acetate in there you just don't have to have it opening so you could just glue it in position so that's up to you whether you want an opening door or just a fixed door and whether you want to be able to see through it or whether you just like a solid front and then the same uh, as we did with the base that we these are the top layers one two and three i haven't put a label on those because they're the only ones in this it's quite obvious the different sizes and there's only two of each and then we've got three sides again three layers of craft board and then these three of the back so if we build that first and then you can decide on your front later so as we did for the base we're going to glue the pairs first and just a small amount of glue all over line them up all the edges so that they're nice and flush and then put them under the steel bench block or your book heavy book whatever you've got I've also got a granite slab worktop saver which I use that's over here it's much bigger and heavier so I use that for bigger pieces or a lot of pieces and again we're going to glue in pairs so we'll leave one out of the back pieces and one out of each side to keep them all the same height under the stainless steel block And we'll let those dry and come back in a minute okay so we can glue the extra layer now onto the sides and the back and then while those are drying let's get our three layered pieces these are going at the top here so remember we did them on the base and we're now going to be putting these ones on the top so you get the same profile coming out and again we're going to put them so that they line up flush at the back and they have the graduated steps at the front So make sure you're happy that the side details are equal and it's flush at the back. And if you do make a mistake, the great thing about Cricut Maker and Craft Board is you can just cut some more pieces if you make, sort of if you glued this together wrong or you didn't have it flush at the back. Oh, I'm not getting that very well on camera there. So. We can again use the clamps that we used with the base to hold that while they dry. And we'll put the sides and back to one side. And let's think about the front. So get all of your pieces in front of you. and then have a play around and also don't forget your off cuts because these little pieces that came out of here can actually be used on the plane piece as well to create a nice detail layer I don't know if you can see that probably looks better on here so that's that's this is the opposite I used the frame there so you could use the sort of arched top piece. You could use the insert of the frame piece to create, there, that's better, a square layer. You could use the frame on its own to create a frame layer or any of these pieces. So have a play around and think, 
what kind of detail would you like and possibly which of the tops that you think you'd like to make first i'd probably suggest if it's your first one that you're making go with the square top the scroll top edge can be a little bit more detailed and longer in the making so if you were going to go for the square edge top you might not want the completely uh, fancy top framed door i've just put it there as a plainer layer detail and that works quite well but it's entirely up to you whatever you'd like to do um, so i think we'll do i've got an opening square door here and i've got a fixed scroll door so maybe i'll do in the tutorial probably the most complicated one which is the opening fancy topped frame so for that one we're going to have the three frame layers and that will be the opening door and then we'll need those to close onto this layer here which will sit on top of if you imagine that one there we're going to create this box with the sides and the back that will need to sit there so that the frame layer can close onto it and we won't see the gap. So I think I will only use one layer of that. You could use more, but it will be supported on all sides. So that's what I'm gonna do in this tutorial. But all the doors are kind of the same construction method. So I don't need anything else for the door except for the three layers for the frame and this kind of backstop layer. So let's glue the frame pieces together first and then we'll construct the rest of the door frame. And this is simply, again, like we did with the base, the sides will glue up to and on the inside of the back piece. So you want them level across the top and the bottom and then up to and level with that side there. So we put the glue on the edge. And if you can, put it on your bench so that you know both of the, the bottom piece of each piece is in alignment and push that up to there. And then just hold it. It will go off quite quickly. And just keep checking that you've got them, the edges nice and square. You can put it that way down as well and use a gluing jig if you want to. And let that dry for a little bit so that it's solid enough for you to handle and put on the other side. And then when you're happy that that's on, this edge is nice and flush, we can do the same. Put some glue on the edge of this one line it up and glue it onto the other side and again if it helps push it down that way if you've got something flat like a coaster you can push it in from the other edge and that will apply even pressure on that joint so we have a little half a box there and then if we get our gradiented pieces there. This is going to sit on the top like that. Hang on, let me hold that that way around. So then you can see that we're now coming back out to the top of the clock. There looks like there's quite a big gap here but that's because we've still got the depth of the door or the front 
of this piece to go on yet. So that's the piece we're working on there. And we will glue that on. So we just need to put glue on the top of these three pieces. And again, because it's a nice flat back, you can do this on the bench. Put them on there and then bring that one up to there and just make sure that it looks even on each side because you know it's going to be flush at the back. So that will be flush there. And if this toes in slightly, you can pull them out so that they're actually at right angles. And then it's easy to check that the door would fit or the front panel, whether it's fixed, you can see it's exactly the right width there. So we can leave that to dry. If you've got any glue inside, use a cocktail stick if you are going to have an open front because you won't want to see that and remove it. And we've got our frame now. Nice set. So the only thing we need to do now is to glue this frame back like that. So that gives something for the frame to shut on. But before you do that, if you were going to want to put a pendulum in, this is the stage where I would say you start to think about fitting your pendulum or painting your piece before you actually fit the front on. It's so much easier to get access to this, to drill a hole, to do any uh, wire work with pliers or however you're going to fix your pendulum while it's in this state rather than decorating everything and then trying to get that in. So what if you do want to do the pendulum, what I suggest is that you drill a hole through there, bearing in mind that if I show you here, I covered where I attached the pendulum with another three layers of craft board, just so it kind of looks neater that way. So if you weren't going to do the pendulum, you can glue this on now and you would want some acetate on there, which I'll cover later. And you could glue that all up now, but we're gonna leave that and we'll do the door sort of more towards the end. So if you're going for the fixed door, you absolutely could put that on now. And if you've got any um, frame details on there, glue those up, fix them on, and you'll have your cabinet. And then the only thing left to do now is to glue this onto the base, which as you can see, you can see my lettering through there, but I specifically wanted to leave those for the purpose of the tutorial. So if, it were, if you were that bothered, you could cut another piece of this and um, cover that up. It doesn't matter. But if you're gonna paint it, you won't see it anyway. So we just put glue on all those edges. And again, we're going to line up the backs that are flush. Get it in the middle. Make sure that the, the vertical struts sort of sides are in fact vertical. Have a good look round and think, okay, does that look even? If there's any glue, wipe off the excess. When you squeeze down sometimes you get more glue seeping out, so always go back and check that. Check that the sides are square. Yep. You can't feel any sort of gap there with the front piece of the door on. And literally, I would just hold that while it takes off. 
only gentle pressure while the glue sets. And of course, if you've decided to put your fixed door on just for effect, it will now look something like that. So if you've decided to do a glass or glass effect front door, you need to go and get some acetate now, some plastic packaging, whatever you're going to use, um, and come back and we'll cut the door next. Okay, I do use some PVC for mine. Uh, can you see that there? 0.015 of an inch thick so I don't know that that's even one millimeter whatever you've got relatively stiff I think and so it would be straightforward if you were doing the square frame you can imagine you can cut that out to do the fancy top frame again I use this this is a jewelry scribe you could use a marker pen. What I'm going to do is actually scribe around the outside, but then cut slightly inside so that it will be, it will overlap the inner frame enough to glue onto the outer frame. So that's what I'm going to do here. Just scribe around the edges. Now I don't know if that's going to show up at all. Can you see? Oh, you can see that. Just see that there. So I'm going to cut slightly inside that now. I'm going to cut the whole thing out exactly to that edge. And then cut away inside. So I don't have then the plastic edge showing on my door I could do this on the Cricut for sure but it almost seems easier to do this by hand I don't know why so that's just there now that's slightly larger so I just want to trim the edges down a little bit this isn't the most scientific way to do it If you wanted to cut this out with the Cricut, maybe I'll put that in there. I'll put that in the SVG so that there is, it will be coloured blue and it will just be the template if you do want to cut the acetate on your Cricut machine. Yep, I'm happy with that. I don't know if you can see that there. And then on the underside it just... Where is it? Can you see that? Yeah, you can just see it's just slightly inside, but I'll put a template for that in the SVG. So you want to glue that and you don't want a lot of glue because it will squeeze out and you might see the edges of the glue on the acetate. So very lightly with the glue this time. And if you get too much, just always take it off again with your cocktail stick. So lightly put that on. And then again, I'll put that under my bench block so that it presses it evenly all over into place and I'll let that dry. Okay, the door has now dried with the acetate in place. So if we were making the fixed front door, you could now glue that on top of that back frame piece if you remember so there's no gaps 
and does just fit in there with a little squeeze and that looks cute as it is so that's where we're going to finish today you'll have your glass framed front on or your fixed solid door front i did one of those as well like that so you could have that on the solid one instead or if you're going to be making an opening um, door and the pendulum we're going to do the pendulum in the next chapter that involves some metal work um, it's not something you have to do and they'll, I'll show you an easy way around that if you haven't got the tools I just happen to do jewelry as well so I have those so this one was actually it's a copper dome an actual piece of copper domed to look like a pendulum but I'll show you a hack for that so come back and join me next time we'll do the pendulum if you don't want to do that skip to the next chapter